There are new signs that more Americans may be facing a serious risk of foreclosure. New data reveals that more than 22 percent of all homeowners, 22 percent, may owe more on their mortgage than their house is worth. Today's Take Charge Consumer Protection segment is on how you can protect yourself. So let's bring in Sherry Olafson, real estate and business attorney. Thank you for joining us, Sherry. Thanks for having me. So for folks watching who are underwater or close, what action can they take? Well, it really depends on the outcome that they want, Patty Ann. I mean, if you have a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan, there are plenty of alternatives. You can either short sell your home, you can do a deed in lieu of foreclosure. Some of the banks are doing cash for keys where they'll actually pay people to move out of their homes. Or you may be able to do a short refinance. Uh, but uh, that leads us to our next question. The Obama administration has five different mortgage relief uh, initiatives, and uh, none of them have lived up to the stated expectations. Uh, some of them have been more successful than others. Uh, the FHA short refi program, though, for example, was projected to help 4 million people. In reality, right. it has helped 880. Why isn't this Ridiculous, working? right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of reasons that they, a lot, a lot of reasons why they haven't worked. To, for to be simple, we can put them in two buckets. One is the problem itself. The problem itself has been evolving as we go. This began as a subprime crisis. If you remember back when those, some of those FHA or the Hope for Homeowner programs began, they would help subprime borrowers. Now what we have is a problem, like you said, with negative equity and unemployment. The other reason is that these programs have been rolled out before they're really tweaked, and we're really behind the problem. We've never really been in front of the problem. The other bucket is the players themselves. I mean, we have government, banks, the not-for-profits. All of those groups are trying as hard as they can, but the truth is they're really not coordinated with each other. They, too, are behind, not in front of the problem, and they all have their own agendas. They have Some of them even have incentives for this problem to continue perpetuating because there are human beings whose job now depends on the problem not being solved. Hmm. Uh, so for homeowners, uh, which of these programs would you recommend? And is there just a lack of awareness of them? Well, you know, that's the biggest problem is that as these programs roll out, homeowners are still not getting the message. In fact, borrowers are giving messages that give them false expectations. And a lot of the time now that's led to distrust. So they're really not responding to anyone. There's also a lack of incentive. I mean, when you can live for free for two or three years, why even take $20,000? But from a homeowner's perspective, the big important thing to remember is that you don't lose money on your home unless you sell it. So it seems that we know that with stocks. We know if our stocks go down, we hold them till they buy. We even know that with other consumables, because remember, your home is part consumable and part investment. So when you buy a car, you know that it's lost value, but you don't expect for the, the person who loaned you the money for the car to make up for that. So homeowners really need to look at the big per picture, and we need some solutions that will take advantage of the low rates and really help people keep people in their homes. Mm. All right, Sherry Olafson, thank you so much for joining us. Sure, have a great day. Thank you, you too. And for more on how you can take charge on a number of consumer issues, go to foxnews.com and you can click on the America's News Headquarters page and look for a link to many of this program's Take Charge Consumer Protection segments.